Hello everyone, I'm Mighty, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a working web shooter from Spider-Man inside of Rec Room. Here we go. Before we get into the actual tutorial, I'm going to tell you a few quick things and show you a bit of gameplay. I know I made a circuit tutorial in the past where you can move players and objects with the command of your hands, but I'm thinking of making a series of cool superhero inventions with gadgets inside of Rec Room. So this is part one of the series, and it's going to be on Spider-Man, and if you'd like to see any other superhero tutorial, what would you like to see? Comment down below the superhero that you'd like me to try and make, and I might just make a video on it. This video took me weeks to make, so if you could, please leave a like, that's all I ask, you don't have to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, that's amazing, thank you so much. If you want to take a step further into supporting me, you can press the top link in the description, that's to support me in Rec Room. Whoever supports me in Rec Room, you are amazing, thank you so, so, so so much it's supporting me way more than you think. There's one last thing I want to say before we get the video started and it's that there's a surprise at the end of this video. And with all of that out of the way, enjoy the video. So to start off, what you're going to need is a trigger handle found in the dynamic section of the props on the last page. Instead of going through all these chips individually, I'm going to show you where you can find them and search them up. So first up, click on CV2 on your palette, go to search chips, and start searching up these names that I'm going to list off. First up, you're going to want an event receiver, now an if chip. You can place this Raycast chip right in the center, get local player, get forward vector, get position, delay, vector create, vector3 variable. Once you place your vector3 variable, clone the one you just placed right beneath it. You can now clone the first event receiver you placed and put it right next to the vector3 variables. Set position. Clone the first event receiver you placed and put it down here next to the trigger handle. Bool variable. If expression. Subtract. Velocity add. Rec room object get all with tag. Get element. Player is authority of. Clone the if chip that you placed and put it next to the bool variable. Clone the if chip again and place it above the subtract. Clone the delay chip and place it next to the set position. Clone another one of the if chips and place it right below the vector create. Next up, you want to configure the blue tab on the left hand side of the Raycast chip on the max distance and type in around 200 meters. Next up, configure the first event receiver that we placed and select update 30 hertz. Next up, configure the top right event receiver that we placed and select vector3 variable changed. Configure the event receiver on the bottom left and select the exact same thing. Vector3 variable changed. Next up, you want to configure the time in seconds of the first delay chip that we placed to be 0.5. After that, we want to configure the second delay chip to be 0.01 seconds. After that, configure the trigger handle, turn off, play sound effects on pressed. Next up, you want to open your palette, go to gadgets, CV2 gadgets, select piston V2. You can place the piston right down here on the bottom right. Now configure the speed of the piston to be 8. Next up, configure the max distance of the piston to be 0.05. Next up, go to Gadgets, Other Gadgets, Third Page, Trigger Volume. Now this is just a Circuits V1 Trigger Volume, not a Circuits V2 Trigger Volume. 
place that trigger volume right above the center part of the piston. Scale it up, just so that it goes over the circuit board. Configure the circuit board, go to chip settings, and select detach from object. Now you can move the circuit board a bit higher up. Next up, you want to configure the trigger volume to keep track of only objects. Let's just go with another easy tag, just like I have in my previous video, so you don't lose track of things. So for the trigger volume, let's just only detect objects with tag. Let's give a simple tag E, just the letter E, because why not? Next up, you want to go to your palette and click on shapes. Select cube and place a cube right above the piston that we placed earlier. Now what you're going to want to do for the trigger volume is you don't want the cube to be in the trigger volume just yet. Manipulate the trigger volume up. You might have to turn off grid for this so that you can get really precise. Manipulate the trigger volume just above the cube so it's barely above it. What you're going to want to do next is place another cube, make sure it's not attached to the other one, configure it, and give it a different tag from the first cube that we placed. Let's give it the tag web because this will be attached to the web when we shoot our web shooter. We can place our web block right below the get element. Configure the rec room object get all with tag chip and type in the tag web. If you've made it this far into the video, comment goblin down below in the comment section and I will give it a heart. So we have our wall of circuits and let's get right to wiring. So click wire on your maker pen. This might take a little bit longer than placing them. Instead of naming what I want to wire to what, I'm just going to show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. You can pause it if you need to at any point and let's just get right into it. So I seem to have forgotten to clone a get position chip, so I'll do that and show you exactly where to place it. Clone the get position up here, place it right into the open in the middle here. So what you want to do for the if expression is change the else that says false and make it say true. So there's two more things I want you to do. Configure the cube down here that has the tag web. So scroll down on the menu of the cube with the tag of web and you'll find this setting called can modify with circuits. You want to turn that on. Next up you want to wire the golden shiny part of the piston to the orange cube right above it. Alright, I'm just going to move the streamer camera over a little bit because we have a few more things to add. So next up you want to open your palette, go to gadgets, then go to math chips, then select the compare chip and place that right next to the trigger volume. Wire the green tab of the trigger volume, total currently in zone, to the left side on the comparer chip. Next up, you wanna open your palette again, go to gadgets, other gadgets, go to the second page, and you'll find range finder. Place two range finders right next to each other. Open your palette one more time, go to gadgets, and select gizmos, and you'll find a look at gizmo. What is it with people named Spider-Man and Venom gifting me while I'm recording a Spider-Man video? That's actually so random, I'm not even kidding, look. Venom, right there, Ve Venom, if you're watching this video, um, uh, per perfect timing, I get- Oh, I moved the entire- Oh, the floor, uh.
So spawn a look at Gizmo right above one of the range finders. I highly recommend using grid while placing it, just so that you can get it as aligned as you can with one of the range finders. Configure the range finders green tab that is right below the look at Gizmo. Make the maximum distance 9999, I guess, just really, really far. And for the other one that doesn't have the look at Gizmo, configure the green tab and type in 35. Next up, you want to wire the if red equals green to the on and off switch of the 35 centimeter rangefinder. You can configure this rangefinder to be whatever color you want for the laser. I like the color green for this one, just any color green really, or any color you want for aiming, like it helps you aim when you're web swinging. Make sure you turn on the setting, show laser when gadgets are hidden. Next up, wire the on and off tab of the the further range finder to the total currently in zone for the trigger volume. And for this range finder, configure the range finder and select the color white and turn on show laser when gadgets are hidden once again. Wire the on and off switch to the look at gizmo to total currently in zone for the trigger volume again. Configure the look at gizmo. The tag to follow, this has to be the same tag that you put for this orange cube. Make sure it's the exact same tag. And the tag we put on ours was web, W-E-B. Next up, wire the top of the look at gizmo to the base of the further range finder. Next up, you want to move the far range finder and move it up just so that it's inside of and just above the look at gizmo. Next up, you want to go to gadgets, gizmos, and select clamp and spawn a clamp. Now wire the release of the clamp to the total currently in zone for the green trigger volume. Wire the top of the clamp to the base of the smaller range finder. What you're going to want to do next is move the trigger handle near the range finders. Select move, go to grid, and make sure modify an object in world space is turned on, and rotate the trigger handle so that the green box around it is as close to the middle of it as possible, like rotating it until it's the green box is as thin as possible, and that's good how it is right there. Next up, wire the base of the look at gizmo to the trigger handle, and the base of the clamp to the trigger handle. What we can do to get the circuit board out of the way is configure it, chip settings, and detach from object so that it doesn't move around with us when we're moving things around. We can just keep this right here for now. Select the look at gizmo and the longer range finder, rotate it to its side. Now move it so it's as close to the center as possible to the range finder so that it looks like a gun. Now do that exact same thing with this range finder, make sure grid is turned on. And that looks good to me. There we go. So I've been messing with this for a while and I figured out why the cube is spawning where we shoot but there's no web coming out of it. And all we have to do to fix that is remember to configure this trigger volume. We forgot to add the tag E to this cube that's going into the trigger volume. So there, now that the tag E is into there, if we shoot this, bam, a web comes out of it exactly where we shoot. So now if I stop flying and I aim at the sky, there we go, a working web shooter. So there we go, we have the green aim assistant, we aim where we want to swing, press the trigger, pulls us up, so as soon as we let go, goes back to the aim assistant, and there we go, we shoot again, aim assistant disappears, the web goes out, and now we have a working web shooter. Now you don't have to go this far, but if you have a soundboard and you'd like a web shooting sound, like I have in this sampler, move it right to here, wire this, play on signal, to when entering trigger zone. Now what I can do is wire the base of the sampler to the top of the look at gizmo here, move the rangefinder back. When I shoot this, plays in my left and right ear exactly where this shoots from. Now, what you can do to make this look better rather than having a cube everywhere you shoot, scale this down really small so that people don't see it. You barely see it. 
whenever you shoot anywhere. Alright, I promised you a surprise at the end of the video and that's what you're gonna get. So I'm working on a map in Rec Room right now with a lot of other creators based off the Spider-Man web shooters I showed in this video. I made an immersive version of the web shooters where it swings your entire body. I'm gonna show gameplay right behind here. It swings your entire body in the direction that you're swinging on the web as if you're actually Spider-Man. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like as it helps me way more than you would think. If you enjoy my content and you want to support me in-game, you can enter code MIGHTY into your watch or click in the very top link in the description down below.